The following is for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back, guys, to our playthrough of Alan Wake. This is part two of episode three, Ransom. We're going to pick up exactly where we had left off in part one. And uh, without further ado, let's continue. The bulldozer's engine roared to life. Mud and rocks flew as it fought for traction. It crashed the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. If it were an animal, it would have shaken its head after the impact, fixed its eyes on me, and charged. Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. Then, it came for me. Oh god, well, that sounds fun. Okay, we're not going that way, but we got the page at least. I wonder if there's any more ammo laying around. For being a writer who's kind of a wussy, the dude, uh, is not bad at shooting a gun. Uh, this tree, I just want to see if I can go up here. Hey, we made it. Might have been an easy spot to pick them all off and stuff. There was something going there. What was that? Shoot. trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. <laughs> he felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. Typical. <laughs> Batteries, ammo. And we're away from the darkness for now. Dude, I, I'm I have Oh, okay. Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you. Something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. Yeah, I think she was possessed. All right. I, I have a, a crazy amount of respect for Remedy. They're a great developer, and I've heard great things about Control and Quantum Break. I have those games, too. I will be playing those on the channel as well, so be on the lookout for those. Somehow, all those games are linked. I don't know how. I hope that's not a huge spoiler, because I don't really know much about that, but it's got me intrigued. I've heard so many good things about those games. I'm just like super stoked to play them. Okay, so it looks like that's where we need to go, but I'm gonna go double back behind me after I read this. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Okay, so when we go to that bridge behind us, be careful. Because it's going to attack us. But what does it want? What is it after? And why does it want to kill Alan so badly? I mean, Alan is a dick, but doesn't deserve to die. Nice. 
full ammo, shotgun ammo, batteries. Achievement unlocked, finders keepers. I mean, it's convenient that these items that are being left behind, oh shit, are specifically for us. the ammo and immediately had to use some of it. Oh well. I could see a railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. All this just to get... Oh, that's right. He couldn't get Barry. Yeah, follow. This is definitely a boss fight. Or something like that. God for health regen, otherwise I would have been screwed. We barely made it. Had like one HP there. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. So either he's talking about it killed the FBI agent or the kidnapper. I'm assuming the kidnapper because we also have As to do a that. teenager, just started to get interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything, and it was getting closer. The good thing is, though, as long as we have our flashlight on the object, it indicates if it's possessed by the darkness. Damn it. So far, this area seems to be clear, but that doesn't mean that, like, it can't become possessed right after, right? So... Yeah, I definitely need some lights. I've been... or, uh, batteries, rather. Wasting them. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, shit. guys.
sometimes I don't even know that they're like bigger firefighter construction looking burly dudes until they're side by side with another normal average height looking guy. In light, you can hurt them. <laughs> Thanks. As if I didn't freaking know that. existence for granted, unaware that they are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Family Occasion. Journalist Alvin Durlis' trip to study the local customs of an insular community in Night Springs has been less than successful until tonight. Well, I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durlis, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition, but you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Could I really? Of course, Mr. Durlis. Well, I guess that's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. I, um, I... be a lesson to all of you gentlemen out there. Never kiss a strange woman. Ever. Get to know them first. The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leap the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Get to a safe spot.
got an achievement for that. Taking out that tractor with heavy metal. I don't like when games give you achievements based on things that you have to do. Like, oh, beat this level, achievement, beat this, like, come on, give me a unique, fun objective. That said, I don't know if, uh, oh yeah, we were supposed to, okay. I wasn't sure if we could escape without destroying that, which is why we got the achievement, but it looks like we had to. There are mutts. There's one page it looked like that we didn't get. So either I missed it or we still have yet to get to it. Oh yeah, grab the hill. If we can. I think we're good. Double check to make sure there's not another page here before we get in the truck. Okay, I think, I think we're good. I don't think I missed it. Maybe I did though. We'll see. never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. The coal mine wasn't far now. Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. Is that a saying? A drowning man will clutch at a straw. I wonder what Stephen King feels about this game, constantly referencing him. Dan Patterson. I think H.P. Lovecraft was the only ones that I remember them men mentioning, but Stephen King's been mentioned a few times. Wait, was I supposed to drive down there? <laughs> yeah, let's double check. Oh my god, Alan, seriously, get a treadmill. Taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Mary was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the dark presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real, but it matched a textbook case of insanity. Yeah, the camera acts really weird when you're inside the truck. Just like gently touching the joystick and it just like freaks out. Whoa, I just wanted to see if there was a thermos or anything over here. I don't remember if we found manuscript pages in the day. It always has to be at night or in some dark spot. But it, I think we're just missing one for this mission or this episode, so I just want to keep my eyes open. Yeah, see, I barely touched the stick, and then all of a sudden I went nuts. touching it. Okay, let's take a look at there. See, I'm just freaking out. Uh, let's go over here. Not really worried about any threats or anything. Oh, I don't have any guns. I lost my guns again? God. Jesus, Alan, you act like you've got smokers long. You Lazy. to that shack real fast there's a lot of open area like this isn't an open world game but it's fairly open considering the situations that we're constantly being thrown into
All right. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF-FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big-shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order, either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but... I'm just so peeved right now, because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. These cars, some of them were run down, but some of the cars actually looked like they were in good shape. I wonder where the people are that occupy them. Have they been taken? Where are those stairs? Are there? I guess in the daytime, you know. See, what is the deal? Like, there's a lot of stuff here that it looks like it's meant for us to, like, explore and look at. Like this log. Like, we're, it's obviously there for a reason, right? I wonder if something's going to happen in the night, and we're going to have to double back here. At least now I can get sort of a... Hey, that's cool. A slightly familiar... ...layout here. <laughs> I wonder who carried that chair out here. Okay, so we got a thermos. That wasn't useless. I really hope that I didn't miss that one manuscript page because I like getting that story bit. All right, I think we're good to move on. It's so obnoxious of this guy. Can't run for longer than like 20 feet without getting winded. I wonder, is it up or around? Because it's telling me to go there. Is it up? Do I have to go around or is it in here? Yeah, I might have to go up. All right. Stop. Reminds me of Days Gone a little bit. We were here already, right? Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Oh, well, see, to me, that's strange, because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever, and you're forever incomplete. I mean, 
Isn't that depressing? Or, heck, childish even? <laughs> There's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything, but what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she... I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work, I don't know, but, well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I'm not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. All right, anything up here? Thermoses, materials? No, we're good. We wasted so much time, Alice is totally dead. <laughs> we did not save her. The town is beautiful. But I could probably not survive up here because the internet would be non-existent. 10 megabits per second up, 0 0.01 megabit per second down. It was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. While lucrative at first, the mining steadily declined in the 20th century. The seams were rich but hard to get at, and the volcanic activity in the area made the mine shafts particularly dangerous. Can't imagine this place is all that profitable. In 1970, a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake, while relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity, and all mining around Bright Falls came to a final stop. Now many of the remaining buildings are protected as historical landmarks. Holy crap. This is a hole you're going to be swarmed by taken area for sure. I didn't want to go outside. The cops had to be looking for me. The noon sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back, or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Stay here all day? Wake! Where the hell are you? Change of plans. You know where Mirror Peak is? It's a big mountain north of where you are. If you follow the path from the mine, you can't miss it. There's a lookout point there. I'll be waiting. I'm through being jerked around you by you. You see your wife online. Cause if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello? Ah! I'm gonna kill him. I want to know why the guy doesn't want to meet I in the day. To, to Mirror Peak. It would be so much safer. Like why? Yeah. It was close. Maybe close. 
closer than ever before. Like, why would you want to meet at night when you have to deal with that thing? It makes no sense. Jesus. I thought there was something interesting about that red hedge. That must be the last one. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow strong and sharp. She was his muse. Well, we got the ammo. things are weaker. Always does that like cinematic dodge when he's trying to run. I think it's when I like turn really hard. Yeah, that's why. Okay. like a train wheel gear and a refrigerator. I don't, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> just knocking the hell out of me. It's funny. There 
are a lot of tanks here. Which leads me to believe we're going to fight something. There we go. Nice. I knew it. Achievement unlocked for that. Because there was just so many of them, I knew that an achievement would, uh, would come for taking that many out in one throw. I just had a feeling. like it was called Sound and Furies. So I think that was the achievement. Hey, flare gun, pretty nice. Just turning that off, turn the light off as well. it does. Every object out here is trying to kill me. I got an achievement for that too by blowing up whatever that little train car thing was. Keep it at distance. Whoa. Possibly momentarily safe. Shit! Just kidding. things are crazy aggressive and I feel a sense of dread every time I run into these guys they're not difficult to kill but there's something about the entire encounter that just makes my butt pucker you know what I mean like Jesus okay, watch out oh you bastard No one in the dark. Yeah, thanks for that. Mind-blowing revelation. 
I don't think there's anything down here that I can grab or use. But these are all people that live in this town, right? And I'm just like wasting them all. There's a there's a bunch more. Shoot. Which was the one that we didn't read? Some of the Taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the dark presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind. And so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him. Yeah, it makes you wonder whatever it's doing to Alan. Like making him write and stuff like that. He has no recollection of that. And it's like not clear why. Does Alan possess some sort of power that whatever he writes comes real? Oh, we're about to fight something big because there's a light right there. Shit. seems like whatever the darkness is, it needs a writer to create things like that other writer that they've talked about. Flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. Yeah, that's a really good point. So this looks like the direction we are supposed to actually go. So if that's the case, I want to double back and take a look at the place that I don't have to go. Down the road, because that means there might be a page or something over here. Yeah, I didn't realize there were so many more pages left. Nope, there's nothing here. It's nice though that the game, when it gives you like weapons and ammo, it's like, in most video games, you're probably thinking like, okay, that's convenient that you get this from here. Like, why would that be the case? Like, for example, just throwing this out there, but I was playing uh, Doom 2016 was the last playthrough I did, a scary game I did for the Mark After Dark segment of the channel. And there's levels uh, where you are in hell. And I'm like, wow, it's super convenient. There's like chainsaws and ammo and stuff down there. Like right when you need it, it just seems a little bit hokey. But in this, it's clear that someone is intentionally trying to help you, and he points it out, and he's, like, aware of it. What is that? Was that a light, or was that a page? Page. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Well, 
I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Who the hell's Raymond Chandler? And that's a wrap on part two. Thank you guys for watching this uh, portion of episode three, Ransom. We will continue with part three and wrap up this episode tomorrow at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on the Mark 9 channel. Before you go, show some love by uh, hitting the like button. Do not forget to subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Any feedback for me, leave it in the comments section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, I appreciate this uh, 40 some odd minutes of your time in watching part two of episode three ransom for alan wake and uh we will complete this particular episode uh tomorrow all right guys that's it for me take care be well i'll see you next time <laughs>